देर आर फ्यू सर्जरीज विच आर एज डिफिकल्ट एज इट कैन बी एंड ओनली सींग देम इज बिलीविंग एंड दिस इज वन सच सर्जरी वेर देर वॉज आ एक्सट्रीम फ्लॉपी आर इज इन रोम इन अ पेशेंट एंड द सर्जरी वॉज एक्सट्रीमली डिफिकल्ट बट इट वॉज फिनिश्ड विद नो अनवॉन्टेड इवेंट विद एक्सेलेंट विजुअल आउटकम so here we have this patient who had some signs of iris and pupil abnormality which is visible because this is the picture which has been captured after installing midriatic and we can see that the pupil is not very well dilated the patient didn't give any history which could contribute to the possibility of floppy iris syndrome however the things as they unfold we'll see in this video so this was the pupil size at the start of the surgery and i believe that i should be able to manage it because this is a size with the kind of hardness the nucleus has it was amenable for me to operate it the incision has been made at the steep meridian and there's also a plan to put up a opposite clear corneal incision and the surgery is being done under topical anesthesia just to augment the pupillary dilatation i have installed intracameral lignocaine which is supposed to augment the dilatation and when the the intracameral lignocaine didn't help i also plan to install phenocaine now this phenocaine injection is available from pharmaceutical and it consists consists of epinephrine and lignocaine so this is the point where i am injecting injection phenocaine expecting that it may enhance the pupillary dilatation but it also didn't help at all so in any case i was prepared to proceed with the surgery so after waiting for few seconds i decided that this is the final size of the pupil through which i'll have to operate now it's important here to mention that pupillary dilatation in these surgeries is very very important because extra capsular cataract surgery especially phaco emulsification requires that the pupil should be very well dilated as the lens matter which is to be extracted lies behind this iris tissue installing viscoelastic 2% methyl cellulose and as you can see this has slightly dilated the pupil a little bit and at this moment we can appreciate the posterior subcapsular nature of the cataract proceeding for capsulorexis as i was mentioning that pupillary dilation is important for various reasons one that it provides you the visibility of the material which is to be extracted out during the surgery secondly there are so many vital structures around this structure of the crystalline lens which we are supposed to remove and one of them is posterior capsule posterior capsule has to be preserved well because the intraocular lens is to be implanted on that surface and it also keeps the vitreous in its location and at at its place so if there is a posterior capsular tear if there is poor view then the vitreous is also dislocated and may prolapse into the anterior chamber which is not a desirable situation so here we have a adequate size of capsulorex is done although this is being done nearly blindly because we cannot see the extreme periphery where the capsule is being torn so it is more or less an intuitive process right now proceeding for hydro dissection which is important to mobilize the nucleus into in the capsular bag so that it can be manipulated for removal so with this situation in picture i proceeded for phaco emulsification Yeah. right now the pupil size is something like 5 mm and then we'll go for a direct horizontal chop 
and during the fluid flow the iris which is not very steady and sturdy will show so many fluctuations and fluttering which is a sign of floppy iris syndrome floppy iris syndrome can be caused by use of alpha blockers which are used in urinary problems especially in males and this was a male patient although it can be used in females also for various urogenitary issues but it is more commonly seen to be used by urologist in male patients apart from that the studies have concluded that use of alpha blockers is a main cause but you can have hypertension and diabetes also contributing independently in occurrence of this floppy iris syndrome a floppy iris syndrome is itself a nuisance when it comes to the cataract surgery because it poses so many hazards during the surgery itself and makes the surgery very difficult and full of complications so slowly and very carefully i am dissecting the nucleus which is lying underneath the iris surface and here the issue is that we doesn't want to touch the iris also because the more it is handled the more are the chances that the pupil is going to get constricted which is going to add to the problem which is persisting right now so i decided that i will remove each fragment of the nucleus as it is presented to me rather than performing rotation and multiple chops first and then proceeding for removal so as you can appreciate that the iris actually has to be displaced to simply pull out the nuclear fragments before emulsification and at this moment there has to be very good foot switch control over the phaco power and irrigation aspiration process so that only the desired tissue comes into the aspiration port and just to give you an idea of the kind of space restraint we have i must tell you that this pupil this is hardly 3 mm in size so you have just 3 mm area to work and this is what can happen when you have a very small pupil and the iris in close proximity with the phaco aspiration tip so you can aspirate the iris also and if power is applied then you will have iris tissue destruction and iris chafing which is the term used for this situation so i have to restrain myself from unnecessary fluid flow and to aspirate only when the relevant tissue which is to be aspirated is in front of my phaco tip slowly and gradually proceeding to further chop the pieces and consume them as and when the pieces come to my phaco tip i must add that there is a element of difficulty added because i am performing this surgery using my non dominant hand as holding the hand piece and being a right handed person holding the hand piece with the left hand makes the surgery little more tricky for me so this has been attempted just because the steep axis allowed the incision placement for this meridian which is was aligned to the left hand another alternative could have been that i could have changed my seating position and then did the surgery so now the pieces are being chopped and being consumed one by one usually i take something like 10 to 12 minutes to complete the surgery but here because it's a very cautious surgery so i am taking more time and the total surgical time was 17 minutes as recorded in the ot log book in this situation at times it is necessary that you may pull out the phaco hand piece 
put some viscoelastic and you can realign the nuclear pieces so that you have more convenient location with respect to the FACO tip and you can also replenish viscoelastic to see if the stretching of the iris can cause some aid in the pupillary dilatation. So manipulating the nuclear pieces and also assessing the amount of nuclear material which has been left behind. Now we are proceeding for FACO massification again to remove the remaining pieces. The iris which is right now very close to the FACO tip can easily be aspirated in spite of no aspiration being done because the infusion pressure increases the anterior chamber pressure and may pull the tissue into the aspiration port. So again iris was aspirated but then a quick reflex of not applying power and releasing the aspiration position of the foot switch releases the iris. So now a small portion of the nucleus is left behind and at this moment it becomes even more crucial to be very vigilant because now the protective layer of the nucleus is absent and any surge or any proximity to the posterior capsule is going to cause contact between the posterior capsule and the aspiration tip which is sharp and it can cause damage to the posterior capsule. So it's a nail biting situ situation where one has to struggle to get the pieces out through that small pupil and at the same time taking care that the iris tissue is not damaged or aspirated into the aspiration port. So although slowly but steadily the nucleus has been removed and now we are left with the cortex. Now the cortex removal is again little tricky here because the cortical matter which is in the periphery is hidden underneath the iris tissue and one has to actually retract the iris away from the central area so as to expose the underlying cortical tissue so as to safely engage it and remove it. So for this a T-shaped dialer or occlusion hook can be used to retract the iris so as to expose the underlying cortex tissue which can be aspirated under direct visualization. If any attempt is done without retracting the iris tissue, the iris is the first tissue which will come into the aspiration port and block the port so as that none of the cortex can then be aspirated. It will also traumatize the iris tissue as well. So it's important that one takes care that iris is retracted well away and then only the cortex is aspirated. So once adequate amount of cleanup has been done, we are now ready for implanting the intraocular lens, which in this case is a hydrophobic monofocal single piece IOL from Appasami Associates. And this comes in a preloaded cartridge and injector system, which doesn't need any loading at the point of insertion. So the IOL is pushed into the bag. The trailing haptic is left in the anterior chamber and now we are dialing it in place. So 
so we can appreciate the size of the pupil through which actually the eyeball is being pulled pushed into the place where the pupil is hardly 3 or 2.5 mm in size surgery has been finished and we can see the viscoelastic gel is being removed and we can also appreciate the fluttering of the iris tissue which is there more pronounced because at this moment the fluid flow is higher than what it was during the fecal emulsification because this patient also had corneal astigmatism of more than 1.75 diopters so opposite clear corneal incision is being placed so as to relax this particular meridian to reduce the corneal astigmatism and resultant astigmatic error one would expect that these scenarios will result into a situation where you have a significant keratitis but this is the next day post op picture which shows a very clear cornea and iris tissue which is expectedly not dilated in spite of use of a midriatic but overall the surgical outcome is excellent and patient's vision was 6 by 9 best corrected visual acuity on day 1 thank you